Do you want to know how to color grade like a pro? If yes, watch this video. As today, we are going beyond the basics and we are going to focus on the nuances that pro colorists pay very close attention to. So if you also want to elevate your color grading skills, you are in the right place. Let's start. And this is our clip for today. It was shot with Blackmagic in Log and I have already converted it to Rec. 709 and as usual I am working in my preferred color science DaVinci Resolve Color Managed and these are my color management settings. I work in the very wide DaVinci White Gamut color space and today I've set my output color space to Rec. 709A as I know that most of you are working without any external calibrated monitors so I wanted to show you that this is the output color space you should have your project set to if this is the case. And if you have a calibrated monitor, it will probably be set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And if you are new here and if you are fairly new to color grading, please consider joining my color grading course where you can learn everything about color management and other things, as there's many very broad lessons covering all sorts of topics. So have a look at it, you can find a link to it below this video. But now coming back to our clip, the first pro tip if you want to bring your color grading skills to another level, is to remember to always use scopes, as this is something that beginners often forget about. So let's have a look at what we have here. So I can clearly see as the trace lays at the bottom half, so it means that my clip is lacking contrast and it's very dark, although it was converted to Rec. 709. So this is something we have to fix. And also I can tell that all color channels, red, green and blue, are quite even. And I can also see it looking at my clip that it actually doesn't need white balancing. It is properly white balanced already. So I can go ahead and skip this step. Usually I create a few serial nodes for my primary adjustments and I adjust the exposure, the contrast and the balance separately. But today I will just label my first node as primaries and I will adjust my contrast and the exposure only using this one node. My favorite tools to adjust the exposure are primary wheels over here. But today, as I want you to expand your knowledge a little bit, I will show you how to do it combining the white curve adjustments over here with the primary wheels. And here what you should know is that we always adjust our clip creating a characteristic S shape. So we push the highlights up by pushing our curve up in the upper half, like this. And then we push the shadows down, pushing the curve down in the bottom half. And then what I also like to do to boost the contrast, I actually like to move the top point over here down a bit, as this way we will not only reduce the highlights if the clip is a bit overexposed, but we will also create this additional curvature over here that will push some of the mids up, creating more contrast, as you can see. And this is before and after. Nice improvement, but to tweak it more, let's go back to our primary wheels. And here I will push my gamma up a bit more and then my gamma down to get more definition. And then I will also use the contrast and the pivot sliders to adjust the contrast. And this is before and after. Now I'm done with the primary adjustments so we can move to more sophisticated techniques that beginners are not aware of. So let's move straight to creating our look. Have you tried new LingMatch AI from Audio? Audio is an awesome music library, trusted by thousands of creators worldwide, and it has got that cool feature, LingMatch AI, that allows you to paste links from places like TikTok, YouTube, or Spotify, and Audio LingMatch will sift through their database to find a song that's most similar. This changes everything. With Audio Link Match AI, you can spend more time creating and doing what you love instead of spending hours looking for a perfect music track. And now you can also get a massive 70% off Audio Pro using my affiliate link and my promo code that you can find below this video. And Audio Pro is the most popular audio license that gives you an access to all music, sound effects, and just mentioned Link Match AI feature. So what are you waiting for? Just click on the link below this video and try it yourself. So I will create a new serial node and I will just call it look. And here I want to transform our greenery I want to make it look more stylized, more quirky. I want to add a bit of teal to it. And as I want to alter mostly the midtones, 
as this is where is the most of that green hue and it will make the grade look more natural to adjust mid-tones and leave the highlights and shadows as they are. So because of that I will use my gamma wheel, but now look what happens when I push it towards steel. It doesn't look right as it also affects all the warm tones, so now the skin tone doesn't look natural at all. So this is where the qualifier comes in handy. So if you know the qualifier tool, you know that we can use it by simply selecting the green hue on the clip and this way we'll isolate the green color from the rest of the clip. But maybe some beginners don't know that we can also use some of DaVinci Resolve's ready presets that can help us perform this operation a bit quicker. So let's go here to color, then presets, and then let's pick six vector green. And this preset, as you can see over here, automatically attempted to select the green hue in our clip. We need to adjust it quite a lot as the selection is barely visible. We have to basically expand the range over here and it looks better. But now we'll also expand the saturation over here. And then here we can also decrease the softness. Okay, and now I will also denoise my selection a tiny bit over here. And let's see what we've got. This is our before and after. So as you can see, we have removed the model from the selection and now we've got a very nice color separation. Now, Let's go back to the primaries and let's try to add more teal to the greenery. I want to push it a little bit more to get a nice vibrant look like this and again before and after. And now I also want to add more orange tones and more saturation to our model. So what we could do, we could use the qualifier again and we could select her, but there's actually a way more simple pro way to do it we can use the outside node. So let's right click on the look node. Then let's go to add node and then add outside. And this adds the outside node. That's basically the same key that we have created before, but the difference is that it is reversed. So when we turn the highlight mode on over here, we can see the selection. You see it's perfectly reversed and this is our look. So let's go back here. And now I will push my gamma towards yellow and orange to add more vibrancy to the person. Like this. And by doing this, we also add some warmer tones to the grass over here that it's nice. And this is our before and after. And now let's have a look at the whole look before and after. Great. So now we are done with our look. So we can move to more creative techniques. So I'll create three parallel nodes after this one, hitting option P. And if you don't know what's the difference between serial and parallel nodes, join my course. And here, first I will tweak my look using the saturation versus luma curve. This is not a popular curve to use, but I was playing around with it recently and I love how it works. You can also see it in my previous videos. So let's go to this curve. And what the saturation versus luma curve does, it basically adjusts the luminance based on the saturation. So here left to right, we have the shadows to highlights value, and then up and down, we have the saturation. So first I will push my curve down in the middle like this. And then I will also push that point on the left down a touch as well, and look at before and after. Look at the difference. We have decreased the luminance a bit in the most saturated parts of the clip, adding some nice depth to it. So now let's move to our next parallel node. And here we will use one of the power windows. Power windows are one of the most popular tools that pro colorists use as the way they work is very simple, but gives great results. We use them to bring more attention to certain parts of the clip and we will use it today to bring more attention to the model. So let's grab the round power window and let's place it around the model. And let's soften it. And now when we turn the highlight mode on, we can see that the power window will affect what's inside it. And I want to affect what's outside. So I need to reverse it over here. And now let's go back to the primaries and let's decrease the gamma like this. 
and this is before and after. Now let's move to another note and here we'll be using halation. And I've been explaining what's halation in one of my older videos that's available only to members of my channel. So if you're interested in it, please join. But today, just to explain it briefly, halation is a halo around the bright areas of the clip. And we can see it in the footage shot on film. And the halation effect that's available in DaVinci Resolve will help us to emulate this effect. So let's get it from the effects tab and let's drop it onto our node. And let's zoom in so you can see how it works. You see that soft glow around the model, but it is a bit too much. So I will use the strength slider over here to make it less prominent. Maybe like this. And this is before and after. And still, I don't want this effect to affect our model's face. So again, I can grab the round power window and I will place it over her face. And then I will simply reverse it. And you see, now the halation affects only the body. And also our clip is not moving that much, but let's track our power window. This is also something to remember. We always have to track our power windows. Okay. And now I am also noticing that the face of the model is blurred a little bit. So let's create another parallel node below. And here we will sharpen the face. So let's label it as face. And then I'll grab the round power window again and I will place it on the face. And then I'll go to the blur tab over here and I'll decrease the radius of it. Not too much. Let's try 0 0.44. And this is before and after. Perfect. And let's not forget to track our window. And now let's see our before and after. Nice. But as the last step, let's create a serial node at the end and let's call it adjustments. As I want to show you one more thing, that thing is called split toning. And there's also a video on my channel covering how to do split toning using curves. I will tag this video in here. But today we'll use the split toning available in the film look creator in DaVinci Resolve. And there's also a video on my channel explaining how the film look creator works. So I will tag it here as well. Feel free to check it out. But now let's grab the film look creator and let's drop it onto our node. Then we can see that the film look creator uses this default 65 mil preset. So let's change it to clean slate over here. And now we need to scroll down here to the split tone and let's enable it. And split toning is basically a color grading technique that involves adding different colors to the shadows, midtones, or highlights of an image to create a specific look or the atmosphere. So here we can manipulate the amount, the hue angle, and the pivot. But today I will only increase the amount just a little bit, like this. And this is before and after. So we have added a touch of a nice warmth to her skin and the dress. And now let's see our final before and after. Thank you so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment below. See you soon.